Okay, YouTube, welcome back to another video. And today we have a special one. In front of me is my uh, recently finished build. This is a 13900 KS, an RTX 4090 build. Uh, this one is uh, fully overclocked. We have multiple profiles from the gaming overclock that we're going to be going over today to a Time Spy Hall of Fame uh, Top 100 uh, overclock at 6 gigahertz. Uh, so this particular video is designed for people who want an everyday gaming overclock that have a 13900K or 13900KS. They're very similar. Uh, the only difference is the KS has binned P cores. That's literally the only difference. And some people are able to actually uh, get better uh, 13900Ks than a KS. It's happened. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's rare, but there has been some bad binning on the 13900KS. Uh, it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, shout out to Intel for that. Um, not everybody's getting the same, uh, you know, similar SP scores. Some are getting lower SP scores on the 13900KS than on their 13900K. And nobody wants to pay $140 more for a KS to get less performance than a 13900K. Luckily for us, and as you can see right here, our SP score is 107. So this is average. This is no, I didn't get any silicone lottery winning CPU. This is your average. And um, so this is kind of like a baseline. I'm sitting probably right in the center of good and bad. So, uh, but I still ended up getting a really good overclocking score on this. So, um, yeah. Other thing, let me see. I got my notes here. Um, so for RAM, the RAM overclocking, we're probably, we're not going to be going over that um, because everyone's IMC is going to be different and uh, most people are going to be selecting XMP and um, just leaving it at XMP. So they'll get their, their RAM speed. So my, um, I have 70, uh, 7200 uh, megahertz uh, DDR5 RAM. And um, for the gaming overclock, I just did my primary timings um, and brought it to 7800. We'll go over that, but um, the, the Time Spy run, um, the Hall of Fame run, was at 8000 megahertz with all the sub timings completed. And we're talking well over 100 hours of, you know, over, or, uh, adjustments and, uh, you know, trial and error on the RAM to get it. To where I wanted it to be but uh, for the average user that just wants to get a nice good daily gaming overclock this is what this is what you're gonna you're gonna have here all right so uh, I did do a picture in picture so you don't have to look at my bios uh, menu on a 49 inch screen so we just moved it to here um, yeah so it's a lot easier for you to see and then you can see the build as well I do apologize for the uh, RGB, the lighting over here. It's uh, you need uh, Thermal Take software to actually adjust that to the correct color. Um, so it's a little weird looking, but um, that's because we're in BIOS. All right, so let's go over what we got here. So uh, first, the hardware, right? Before we even uh, get into the BIOS. So 13900KS. Asus Tough Gaming RTX 4090. All right, as you can see, this the system is completely water cooled. All right, and um, full custom. I did everything. Uh, it looks absolutely awesome. Um, I, I couldn't be happier. Uh, three rads, two pumps, sixteen fans total, and um, temperatures are absolutely amazing. Z790 Apex uh, motherboard. Uh, that is a two dim configuration. We have the, I don't even have the by ski or, or however you say it. Uh, the Ram covers, um, really nice, um, covers here. You can see them. You can kind of see them up there. Um, so they're better heat sinks for the Ram. Um, they dropped temps around 10 C, uh, on the Ram. And they look really nice. They're a lot better than the RGB uh, heat sinks that come stock in the RAM. A couple of things, you know, I've got the custom screen here. Um, I custom made this. 
Uh, I was able to get our, our rad down here. We got a rad in the back and obviously a rad up top. Um, and then you have the thermal take uh, distro plate right here. And then um, we have our other reservoir right here. And then our our uh, flow meter uh, right here. We're at uh, four, yeah, 4.2 liters, liters per minute. That's a little overkill. You don't need 4.2 liters per minute, um, but we can uh, make the adjustment and we can actually slow that down a little bit. We don't need to pump that much. Um, typically, uh, three liters per minute is like the uh, the best you're gonna, the best results come from three liters per minute. Anything after that is a diminishing return, so to speak. So we have that. Let's see, anything else? Um, yeah, that's really about it. It's, uh, it's been a build in progress, uh, made multiple changes to it, uh, changed the tubes out multiple times, um, but finally got it to where I wanted it to look. And I do, I will have some changes coming up, but for now we're gonna leave it just like this. All right, so let's get right into the, uh, now there's a quick overview of the uh, PC. Let's just get into the BIOS. Let's go over this overclock. Um, I don't wanna to waste too much of you guys' time. Um, so basically, before we begin also, keep in mind that your, your settings that you apply in this BIOS First may look different. Your BIOS may look different if you don't have an Apex motherboard. Um, but uh, some of the settings that I have chosen may not uh, work for you. So hope this should be designed to be like a baseline for you to follow. And then you make the associated changes you would like uh, for it to work for you. Um, but I figured if I show you the uh, my full out gaming all out performance overclock that I have chosen and you guys can copy these settings. Um, so, like I said, um, I mentioned before, this is, um, this this bill is all out. It's, uh, the CPU frequencies don't clock down. You have all the performance all the time. Um, so, there's no, it doesn't uh, clock down at idle, um, but the, the voltages stay very low, and this is just the balls to the wall performance build for an everyday uh, overclock. All right, so let's get started. All right, so come in here. You can see silicone prediction 107. Uh, don't 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 dwell on this cooler score because this can change drastically. Um, I would not uh, I would not dwell on that. Um, but uh, if we go down to um, AI features here, you can see um, what I'm looking. At here so P cores for the KS 117 and my E cores 89 um, they're they're good they're not bad but they're not awesome like I said we're right in the center so um, just gotta it's kind of a risk to return the CPU and then get another one in hopes that you get a bit higher SP um, at this point at 107 it was a I didn't want to risk Setting it back and getting a 105, um, it's just not worth it to me. So I made, I made do with what I had here. So let's scroll back up to the top. All right, so um, as you can see here, so for uh, this particular build with the water cooling and everything, I have my daily set to 5,700. Now, if you're on an AIO, um, you should... Still be able to run 5700, but your temps will be uh, obviously higher. Um, you won't be able to pull as much heat. So you may decide to set your daily to 5600 or maybe 5500. It just depends on what temperatures you're comfortable with. All right. And then our E cores, um, 4500. Okay. Right here. All right. I have my RAM. This is just my daily RAM speed, 7800. Um, and once again, time only the uh, primary times are adjusted for this. I didn't really put too much uh, time and effort into this. It's just daily RAM speed. Um, and then my cache is uh, at 5,000. All right, 5,000 megahertz. All right, so XMP1 is set. 
Now, um, once you once you actually click this once, if I were to click on it again, it would actually bring my RAM speed back down to 7200, but I have overclocked it to 7800. Now, also keep in mind, XMP is a RAM overclock, but it's just a very generic overclock. It's going to be good for most people, but if you want to take your RAM to the next level, um, it leaves a lot of room on the table uh, for more performance when you overclock your RAM past the overclock of XMP. As you can see, XMP um, here is set to 72, but I made the adjustments later. All right, so we'll go through each menu. I have some notes here on trying to see. I did change a lot of settings in here, and I, hopefully I remember everything I've changed um, so you can guys can copy it and get a baseline for your build. All right, so, yep, we'll go down here. All right, so I've selected 7800 on the RAM. And here's where the people really start caring. Sync all cores. This is an all core overclock. This isn't um, a core usage overclock, okay? So we're at 5.7 all core. Um, some of you may want to have yours set to where two cores are at 6 gigahertz, four cores, 5.9, eight cores at 5.8 or, or 5.7. Whatever you may choose, this is the I do this as an all all core overclock. All right. So five seven all core right on the P cores. Come down to our E cores. I've selected four five. All right. Okay. So next up on the list is DRAM timing control. So. Um, Unfortunately, I won't be sharing my timings uh, for my 8,000 run. Um, that just basically, as the as your IMC dictates what you're going to be able to, it's you copy that. It may you may um, may have some stability issues, so I don't want you to copy it and have stability issues. Um, so this is kind of like a, a a baseline here, and you can start here. Um, and or start yeah on your your RAS here you can probably start a little bit higher. Um, I may go a little bit lower than this, but for now I just stopped right here. Mo two uh, CR thirty four and then forty five forty five fifty and just the primary times are adjusted here. Um, so now keep in mind when you do this when we go down further in the menus you have to bring voltage up to supplement these um, the tighter timings here. Okay. All right, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Go back. All right, let's see. Next up, Digi plus uh, VRM. All right, so just copy this stuff here. It's a lot easier just to, this video will be way too long if I go through everything. All right, so this is what I copy here. Some of you may change your load light calibration. I've selected seven. Some of you may feel comfortable with with six, or you might go to eight. Um, depends on your comfort level, what you want to do. All right. Some of these other things have been uh, changed. All right. And those are all auto on the back there. Yeah, I don't want to make a 40 minute, the attention span of people is really short, so I don't want to make a, a video like two hours and people are just skipping through it to get to the numbers. All right, so I'm just trying to get through this quickly. Next up on the list, uh, internal CPU power management, all right? All right, we set our max temp. The CPU can only go to 100. Now, you can change that if you want to go to further. I'm not going to change that. I'm going to keep it at 100. Um, it can go past 100, but uh, we'll keep it at 100. All right. All righty, so copy these settings here. All right. Scroll down. All right, next up on the list is, all right. Okay, so we have to come down here. All right, so ring down bin, auto. Our cash ratio our, for our daily here is 50, all right. Base clock wear adaptive voltage, we have it disabled. All right, 
uh, voltage regulation module uh, core voltage, the actual, set that to manual mode. So right here, CP core voltage override, I have mine set to 1.260. That does not mean that you are gonna be able to set yours to 1.260 at a 5.7 overclock, right? Um, there's many variables um, that have to do with that. Uh, temperature, um, silicone lottery and prediction, uh, and other um, variables as well. So um, you start low, and then you start working your way up until you get stable, okay? Um, so 1.26 is where I run my 5.7 daily overclock at, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, you could start there, and if you you know you have stability issues um, in one of your testing or you, or uh, whatever it may be, you can uh, come and raise this up a little bit. Okay. All right. System agent voltage, right? Okay. Manual mode, CPU, uh, system agent voltage override. I have that set to one point two five zero. When I have this set to auto, I was having some stability issues here. Um, so the cash voltage, um, I have it set to 1.250. All right, CPU input, uh, excuse me, CPU uh, input voltage 1.90. All right, all right, and then um, for your RAM overclock, uh, you will need to enable this mode. To in order to get your, I think 1.45 is the max you can do, or, or let me see here, uh, auto, let's see what the max is you can do, 1.450, okay, so you can see right here, 1.435 is the max that I can do, um, so now you have to enable this in 1.50, right, just like that. Now, uh, this will take some uh, adjustment as well. Um, I recommend using, uh, you know, a RAM test or like a one USMUS RAM testing uh, to ensure RAM stability. Um, so that's, uh, as well as I think there's a, we have to, once, once I get into, uh, once I get into the desktop and go over all the uh, programs I'm using uh, to, uh, ensure stability all right okay so that's it for extreme tweaker menu all right um i don't think we had to do we have to go in let's see just make sure i'm not missing anything all right so next menu is the advanced menu okay and then cpu configuration and then i'm pretty sure i changed some just copy all this stuff right here And then in CPU power management control, uh, make sure uh, C states is disabled. Okay. All right. And that is that is it for uh, all the numbers there. So um, another thing I would like to do is after we finish here is go into the um, desktop and go over some of these programs uh, that we're using to um, determine full stability and uh, this can be a, a pain in the ass to uh, go through all this so definitely have a lot of patience uh, keep in mind best rule of thumb is to overclock the CPU first and then you overclock the cache next and then you uh, your RAM is last so don't even, when you're doing the CPU overclocking, don't even touch the RAM, leave it in an auto. Leave the, the, don't even touch the cache. Get the CPU stable and ensure stability through the programs and then start working on the next one. Now, as you get all three uh, overclocked, they might affect something, uh, your RAM speed might be affected by, or the overclock from the RAM might be affected by uh, core voltage uh, or something might be adjust, need to adjust, so it's just uh, a lot of trial and error uh, in that regard. So uh, let's uh, let's get out of here. Oh, 
Yeah, before I forget. Um, so, in this menu here, you're going to want to um, do a couple things. So, USB drive, have it in there. You're going to want to make sure you're saving um, these a couple documents here. You're, you want to save a CMO file, and then you want to um, also save the BIOS settings. Um, if you're going to have multiple overclocks like I do, um, save them in here. That way you go to the BIOS and um, you can uh, select which one you want. So uh, for the all core uh, 5.9, I can still game on this one at 5.9, uh, no problem. Um, but it really pulls a lot of wattage um, and a lot of power. So that's why we um, went with the daily here and brought the frequencies down just to, just to slightly. Um, but this will go to six gigahertz, um, no problems at all. And I'll go over that. Uh, I'll go over that run uh, in the desktop as well. All right, guys, we're in the desktop now. Um, some of these programs weren't on my Windows uh, 10 uh, desktop, so I'm on my Windows 11 desktop. Um, so I wanted to go over um, how. Basically, my overclock that I just showed you guys did with the all-out settings that I selected, um, and uh, the results are awesome. So, uh, this was done at 6 gigahertz, as you can see on the left side here. Um, I am uh, 66, uh, ranked 66 in the world in the Time Spy Hall of Fame. Alright, so this is the Hall of Fame. There's Time Spy right there. If you scroll down, down to number 66, that is me, uh, 13900KS. And you kind of get some basics. It says uh, Z790 Apex. That's the motherboard I have. And then you can go ahead and hit the detailed results. So let's go into detailed results. All right. Um, so uh, CPU score 29,814 and our graphic score 40,766, all right, come down. Um, so I've had cooler temperatures before, um, but uh, this was done with the air conditioning on, but I couldn't get any colder than that. Uh, unfortunately, I, um, I don't live in a snowy mountainous region where I can just uh, put my computer out in the snow and then um, get uh, legendary temperatures, uh, like some do. Um, I'm in San Diego, so not the coolest, uh, place in the world, uh, temperature wise. So, um, do what we can do, right? But what is impressive right down here is this 13,900 KS, six gigahertz, my average, it maintained six gigahertz, um, which is awesome. And at 64C. That's just, a lot of that has to do with the just overall setup and massive uh, efficiency that I've built on this PC. Between the three RADs and 16 fans, uh, extremely efficient and, uh, and it works extremely well. I, uh, I love this setup. Uh, I couldn't be happier. All right, Windows 10, uh, 21H2. Now, you might have heard the rumors about 22H2 and the 21H2, and it's true. Performance gains on the 22H2 update significantly hinder the performance on Time Spy and other games as well. Um, so that's why they have actually made 22 or 2H22, one of those two, the 22 update, an optional update because it's so bad. If you have the chance, Go back to the 21 uh, update. The 22 is just hinders your performance. Uh, so if you're wondering why your time spy score may be way lower than others of similar hardware and similar temperatures, chances are you did it on 22 H2. Uh, whether that there's a 22 H2 or um, there's a 22 update on Windows 10 and 11, it doesn't matter. If you do your time spy score on Windows 10 or Windows 11, as long as the update for either of those is the 21, 
your performance, your scores will significantly skyrocket once you swap um, to the 21. And then you can see right here, I'm on the 21 update. 10 point, 0 point, uh, 0.19044 is the 10 point, or is the uh, 21 update here, okay? And then you can see 8,000, all right? Now, scoring this high, these scores, stability is king. Um, there are some people doing, um, frankly, they're frying their CPUs, but they're running 6.1, 6.2, but their scores, their CPU scores, aren't it not near this and it's stability is king like you'll you you lose a lot of points if your system is not stable so stability is king uh there all right so that's the that's the good that's the run there um extremely good and uh very happy with that being in the top 100 in the world all right and then um one of my favorite programs that i like to use um i still haven't bought it yet is uh, occt you definitely want to get this the program is free um, you can pay for the program and avoid having to wait every time you start an ad like for example this right here and then it'll say wait 10 seconds this will be where you buy it um, and I don't use it enough to really want to buy it but um, this stop right here um, so yeah you just um, you don't need you don't need to pay for it, but it's very informative. It has a lot of settings in here and testing as well. Another program um, would be uh, TM5 um, for your RAM testing. This will test your RAM speed, and uh, there's actually a chart um, you can uh, download that it'll give you some numbers. It'll spit out some numbers, and you can actually uh, reference those numbers and see what may be wrong with your RAM. Maybe. You don't have enough voltage in your RAM. Maybe you have too much voltage. Maybe your, you know, your RAS or TRAS or whatever setting in your RAM might be uh, misadjusted. That's for people that um, really dialing the RAM. Now you can't still use this for the sub timings, or excuse me, you can't uh, use TM5 even for if you just adjusted a few timings, uh, the primary timings, and you don't feel like touching the sub timings. The primary is just enough for you. I'd still use the program and, and it'll tell you, it'll, it'll go through a bunch of testing and if it passes, that means your RAM is stable. Um, now OCCT will, um, will take into all account. Now if you have your CPU and your cache is stable, but your RAM isn't, this could fail. So this is, um, I like this program because this, um, this and A to 64, if it passes on both, your system is completely stable. Um, so it could pass on one program and fail on another. That means your system is not stable. Um, what I like to do is run an hour of this. Um, these are just, uh, I have it set to 10 minutes, but it said it's an hour. You run this and then run A to 64 as well. And if it passes everything, that means your system is completely stable. Um, but, uh, you will have to run, get these programs. They're, um, they're very important to have. Um, another one here I like to use, Hardware Info 64. This one's awesome. This gives you all the parameters, everything uh, you, going on with your computer. CPU, GPU, RAM, temps, everything like that. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend getting this one. This one's the best program. It seems to be the most accurate as well. Um, so, And apparently you can highlight uh, certain parameters that you want to... Uh, um, keep an eye out for because when you open this up, you, you know, you're, if you're looking for, see RAM, RAM temperature right here, if you're looking for this, but you're trying to, you open it up and then you, you kind of just get, uh, a little screwed up. You don't know where it is. You can highlight it. So you actually, your eyes will automatically snap, uh, to where that, um, parameter is that you're trying to look at. Um, so yeah, there's that. And yeah, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to have this video be an hour long. Um, I was basically wanted this to, for guys that um, have an Asus motherboard um, of some sort and uh, have similar parameters in their bias they can follow. And uh, pretty much plug and play the numbers. You might have to adjust a few numbers here and there, but have a good um, steady overclock uh, instead of just picking uh, AIOC. Um, 
as an option though. AIOC is good, uh, but I still don't like how much voltage it applies. There's still more room for improvement. So AIOC is definitely the best uh, one-click uh, overclock out there on any platform, but there's still room for improvement. And I'd say voltage, uh, there's no reason to be sitting at 1.5 volts doing nothing. It's not going to hurt anything, but there's no reason to have 1.5 volts uh, light loading. Uh, there's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I think there's anything else to, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. All right, guys, that's going to uh, do it for today's video. Uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, post any comments or questions you may have down the bottom. I'll answer them um, as soon as I see them. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.